Chapter 6, Defining Value Directions. In the first set of clips, we'll be working with Julie, who is a client dealing with some moderate level of social anxiety. She's come to therapy with an interest in overcoming this anxiety and making uh, deeper, stronger friendships, and finds herself to date uh, unable to do this and largely finds herself on the outside looking in on relationships. The first vignette will focus on core competency number one, which is about helping the client clarify value directions. So Julie, we've talked quite a bit about your struggles with you know, anxiety and feeling like, um, you know, that that really gets in the way of your engaging with people and having friendships. And, yeah. Yeah. And part of what I wanted to focus on today was um, looking at sort of the larger picture of this, the larger context in which this struggle is, you know, occurs. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've been sort of focused on all the trees and we want to look at sort of the forest, like what is it that you want to be about in terms of relationships in your life? Like what is it that that matters to you in terms of your relationships? Well, um, I think that I have a hard time being so focused on my inner dialogue and me doubting myself and my self-consciousness that I fail to be a good friend to mm -hmm. a lot of people who love me and mm -hmm. it hurts me to see that but then I I don't know how to stop and listen mm -hmm. so you feel like you're you feel like you're not a good friend so what I want us to do is we're going to sort of walk through some different domains of functioning for you and I'm going to I'm going to jot down like what you say and our job here with this is to really come up with some really concrete sort of statements of what it is that you want to have happen. And so I'm going to work, you know, to help us uh, kind of get really clear on what are your values in this area? What is it that's important to you? And one of the things you just said was you wanted, um, you felt like you're, you're sort of not, you're not there for your friends. Right. Is that right? Yeah. And how would you want it to be? Well, I mean, I would like to not always be the person calling up crying. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like no one could count on me in that way because I'm not yeah. strong. Yeah. Okay. So in that domain of friendships, when, what you want is to not always be the one who's calling up crying. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to write that down. Does that seem to fit for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what are you writing down? Just what you said. Okay. Not always be the one who's crying. Okay. And that's, that's what you want in that. Right. Okay. What are other things that you want when you think about your friendships? Um, I want to have a good time when I go out mm -hmm. okay. instead of, you know, I can kind of bring myself some nights to actually get to the place, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. so draining. Yeah, okay. So you want to have a good time with friends. That yeah. feels like kind of the way you want to be. So that was an act inconsistent piece. It wasn't uh, terribly act inconsistent, but it did have a few different aspects. Um, the first aspect was that part of what the therapist recorded as a value was actually more of a goal. And particularly, as you might have read in the chapter, um, a dead man goal. The, the client said um, they wanted to not always be the one who's crying. And uh, this is a sort of inactive, passive goal that um, are not of the sort that we want to have um, in relation to values. Um, it's also a problem because it's not it's it's a it's a it's a goal and not a value. Um, the second part that was problematic in this segment was that it didn't have much of the qualities that we want to have as part of a, a powerful values conversation, like vitality, uh, willing vulnerability, um, a present orientation. Those sort of qualities were not 
very much in there. In fact, the therapist was sort of um, laid back a bit and um, kind of you know behind their tablet of paper, um, and that is engaged with the client in this segment. So, um, Julie, we've spent a lot of time already talking about the different struggles that you've, you know, had with social anxiety and mm -hmm. how you feel like you've been fighting this for a long time and it really stands in the way of, of uh, you um, kind of having the relationships that you want and you've been really working hard to overcome it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and part of what I was wondering about is if we could spend a little time kind of looking at the bigger picture of what are your dreams and your goals in terms of your um, in terms of your relationships like if you could um, sort of have your relationships be however you would want them like if it were just so simple that you could just like you know you had like a uh, a bowl of prizes and you could just reach in and just pull out the kind yeah. of relationships that you wanted what would those look like for you well um I'd like to have someone who I want to call up and share good news. Mm -hmm. I'd want to have good news. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I want to have, I mean, obviously a boyfriend at some point. Mm -hmm. I haven't had one in years. And um, I just want to have friends that are relationships that don't feel like a chore to tend to. So I, so I hear a couple of things in there. You'd, you'd want um, you'd you'd want to have it feel like it was a choice. Like you'd really you'd really want to have relationships that really um, sort of felt meaty to you, or felt like that they were important to you. Yeah. That seem seem right. Yeah. Is there any other thing else I missed in there? I had I, I feel like there was like a first piece that I sort of missed in there. Um, just being able to share good news. Feeling, mm -hmm. so you want people in your life where you felt like kind of connected enough to and yeah. close enough to that um, you would want to share, you know, good news with them. Yeah, and that and that they would be sort of be there for you. Yeah, to feel like to feel right, like that's what that's sort of the kind of relationships you want. Yeah, that feels right. Has there ever been a time in your life where you felt like you had those kind of relationships? Yeah, I'm. I mean, as a kid, I had no problems being social. I was always out playing with everyone, and it, it really wasn't a problem until, um, I don't know, maybe I was 13-ish. Mm. When I started moving into adolescence, I just started doubting myself a lot. And, and who, who, who was your best friend back then when you, like, can you remember? Yeah, yeah. Megan Myers. Mm -hmm. And what was that friendship like? Um... I was, I mean, I could spend the night at her house and not come home for three days, and mm -hmm. it didn't matter, you know. Mm -hmm. I felt safe mm -hmm. next to someone, mm -hmm. which I haven't mm -hmm. felt in a really long time. And is that something you'd want to have again in your life, that sort of, like, sense of, like, feeling so connected to somebody and, like, so there with them that you felt, like, safe to be able to just be just, just who you were with yeah. them? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely would. So this was more of a act consistent uh, vignette, and in this vignette, you saw the therapist um, focus more on the client's experience in the moment. And as this was uh, an attempt to illustrate core competency number one, clarifying value directions, the focus was bringing some of these qualities of a uh, powerful values conversation in the room, like vitality, um, choice. Um, and you saw the therapist kind of hit on the issue of choice, at least initially, by asking the person to focus on uh, what, what they would choose. And there was also more of a sense of connection um, and vitality in the conversation. Um, where the, where the uh, therapy might have gone next would have been, um, and perhaps this was an, an error to kind of pull away from this at the end, would have been to go more into the experience of what it was like um, to be with her childhood friend and help the client to really get in contact with that experience in the moment 
and then using that to help set up um, a choice in terms of whether that uh, whether she would be willing to um, experience some of these difficult uh, ex you know anxieties in the if it were going if we're able to serve that value. This vignette continues in what would be a later session with Julie after um, we've already worked on uh, getting clear on the client's values. And this one focus on, focuses on core competency number four, which is helping the client to uh, distinguish between outcomes achieved and involvement in the process of living. What we're going to do here is uh, pick up at what would be the start of a session and uh, where this, where this leads is that the week before, um, Julia has committed to some homework um, or some, you know, some actions over the week that would be consistent with her values of connecting with people and um, being, being able to be sort of spontaneous um, and uh, playful in interactions. And she noticed that one of the things that she does um, that gets in the way of that is she'll spend uh, minutes or sometimes even hours um, preparing and maybe writing notes about what she's going to say to somebody before she goes into um, a conversation. And so the task was to um, let go of uh, preparing like that and just to walk in to a conversation and to practice this on a daily basis um, at work this week. So Julie, I thought we'd check in with um, start by checking in with what happened this week in terms of the, the commitment that you made. Well, um, I did do what you asked me to do and I, I went out and I tried to connect and make some friends, I guess, but it, it didn't go well at all. Mm -hmm. And I felt every time that it was basically just failed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you, so you felt like you were sort of going out to connect with people and then mm -hmm. like because you felt like you didn't have that feeling of like feeling connection. It, it was like you, it was like sort of like you blew it or something. Yeah. 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 But um, I want I want to check back to like our conversation about last week and like was was that what we were trying to do was um, get you to where you um, felt connected to people? Was that like what we were practicing in that? Do you remember? Yeah, I mean, getting there was the the start and, mm -hmm. and, and talking and that's ultimately what I want is connection. Yeah, yeah. So part of what part I want us to look at is um, the difference between sort of this focus on goals and sort of you know it sounded like when you walked in there you were really focused on the idea that you were going to connect with these people right? and that if you didn't connect with them then that was going to be something that was like really bad. Yeah. Does that seem fair to say? Yeah, like I lost. Like you lost. Yeah. yeah. And I want you to remember when we talked about it, that wasn't really what we were doing. We were looking more at um, the path that you want to be on. I don't, if you can remember last week, like, um, w yeah, you want to create connection with people and you want to be connected, right? right? But we want to focus more on sort of the side of that that, that that you have control over, which is what you do with your hands and your feet. And what you did here was you let go of one of your barriers that stands between you and other people. Like, did you do that part of, um, you know, uh, not preparing before you went in? Yeah, I just tried to, yeah. to walk in. Yeah. yeah, cool, cool. And that felt good. Cool. So you let go of that. Yeah. And that was like, we were sort of practicing like a willingness move there of letting go of that barrier. And it sounded like when you got into the situation, you kind of got caught up in this whole sort of focus on the outcome of how it was turning out. And you got sort of attached to this goal of, uh, you know, am I feeling connected or not? Or sort of are they, are they, uh, yeah. are they liking me in this yeah. moment? Rather than paying attention to the process that you wanted to engage in, which was mm -hmm. this process of like, you know, here I am moving towards connection with people. Right. And part of that process is going to be, you know, at times it doesn't work out. Oh. And so part of what we want to do is see, you know, can you, can you continue to have your feet, you know, moving in that direction, you know, even as your mind is sort of chattering to you and saying these things like, you know, I'm not connecting or, 
Um, yeah. You know, they're not liking me and those sort of things. And it sounds like you did that this week. Yeah. But then there's this focus on the kind of goal that sort of took it away from you in a way. Yeah. Does that seem fair? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That seems right. So that was a, an act consistent piece. And uh, again, it was competency four um, in that I was trying to help the client to reconnect with the process that was um, being focused on in this um, rather than so attached to the outcome. Um, what seemed to happen during the week was that the, uh, the uh, exercise sort of transformed from um, an exercise that was about getting her feet moving in this direction and into uh, really an attachment to a particular goal that she sets for herself and sort of um, really is harsh with herself around, which is this goal of um, feeling like she's connected and feeling like people like her. And she got attached to that as she did the exercise and started to evaluate, evaluate herself more in reference to that goal, rather than sort of appreciating the qualities of herself um, as moving towards this uh, value direction while letting go of, uh, you know, barriers that often tend to stand in the way. Again, we return to core competency number one, helping the client define value directions. And this vignette is specifically um, focusing on the issue of um, goals versus values. And uh, in this um, case, we're going to be um, having uh, Derek, who uh, is part of his goals for therapy, is um, having a better relationship for, with his wife. So Derek, what is it that you want with your wife? You know, if you could just choose what you'd be about there, like, what would that be like? Quit arguing. Quit arguing. Resenting her. <laughs> and what would you need to do to do that? God, I think I'd, I'd have to start with um, disrespecting her. To stop, you mean stop disrespecting her? Yes. Yeah, okay. This was an act inconsistent vignette. Um, the therapist started out fine with a, a, a question that, that could go either way, um, but the client gave a response which um, was more of an avoidance goal or what we might call a dead man goal. Um, a dead person is going to be able to, to do the job of not arguing better than this client uh, is likely to be able to do. And uh, we want to come up with goals which have a sense of, uh, and values with, which have a sense of what's the client moving towards rather than what's the client moving away from. Um, and by uh, the therapist accepting this goal as something to orient towards, um, we're, we're likely to be feeding that process of moving away. And Derek, what would you, you know, want in your relationship with your wife? I mean, if your relationship could be about anything, if you could be about anything in that relationship, you know, you could just choose it. What would you, what would you choose? Stop. Stop resenting her. And, it, and if you were able to stop resenting her, like, what would your relationship, like, if you could just imagine that, like, that you just got to that place sort of magically that you weren't resenting her anymore and you weren't fighting anymore, what would you hope that this relationship would look like and how were, you know, you'd be in it? I think, um, communicating, understanding, and doing things we used to do. Yeah, okay. So both of you would be communicating and understanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And specifically you from your side. Like if you were able to sort of let go and that resentment sort of just sort of magically evaporated, you'd be more connected and... Present. More present. Yeah, more, more fulfilling. More fulfilled, perhaps, yeah. as like an outcome. But maybe you don't have a choice over that, but you'd be, but like you might have more of a choice over whether you're going to be present or not. Exactly. There for her. Yeah, there for her. That would be part of the picture. Cool. That's exactly it, yeah. Okay. And her for me as well. 
just to enjoy simple things. Right. So that that would be part of the vision. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm really striving for that. So that was an act consistent vignette, again focusing on the issue of developing uh, goals that would be more approach type goals. Um, the client originally uh, came and presented a goal that was uh, more of an avoidance goal initially and my job was to help the client to contact what, was the, what is the, the value and the quality of action that the uh, that might be perhaps behind that goal, and so I sort of sidestepped the initial statement and asked, you know, if you were to achieve that goal, then what would you hope things would be like, in an effort to hopefully draw out what are the client's dreams and the hopes, um, hopefully something that the client could attach or connect to um, in a more powerful way than just not arguing anymore.